Hello, humans. All right, I received another question. Can you explain blasphemy over the Holy Spirit and your thoughts on it and whether or not born-again believers can commit this sin? All right. Well, I already made a video on being baptized in the Spirit, so let's talk about blasphemy against the Spirit. So this person's question is based on Matthew 12, 31 to 32, so let's just read it. It says, Therefore I say to you, any sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven people, but blasphemy against the Spirit shall not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. Now, many Christians talk about the unforgivable sin and they express their confusion and their concern about it, often wondering if they have committed this unforgivable sin. But what exactly is it? Well, first, the verse states that it is a blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. So what is blasphemy? It is that Greek word, blasphemia, from blasphemos, which is defamatory speech of the divine or to speak evil against God. Essentially, it is any contemptuous expression that rejects God's authority and questions his nature while being defiantly irreverent. But how does one specifically blaspheme the Holy Spirit? And how is this any different from blaspheming God? I mean, after all, isn't the Holy Spirit also God? Well, I mean, that's the point. So that which can only happen because of God should only be attributed to God. Now, I believe that the unforgivable sin is the sin leading to death mentioned in 1 John 5:16. I also believe that Hebrews 6, 4-6 explains it. It says, For in the case of those who have once been enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and have been made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away, it is impossible to renew them again to repentance since they again crucify to themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame. Now, some Christians often worry if they have committed this sin. However, I believe that such a concern is itself evidence of the openness to the work of the Spirit and the reason why true children of God do not commit this sin. Now, in proper context of Matthew 12, 31 to 32, Jesus had just healed a man who was blind and mute. But the Pharisees declared that it was only by the power of Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that Jesus was working miracles. They witnessed the miracles firsthand and saw the fruit that came from the work. In Matthew 12, 26, Jesus said that if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself, and so is his kingdom, and his kingdom will not stand. Matthew 12, 28, Jesus tells them that the good miracles are due to the Spirit of God. This is why Jesus told people to judge the works themselves and that every tree produces good fruit and we will be known by our fruit. Thus, the unforgivable sin is proclaiming that the Holy Spirit is unclean and attributing to Satan what is only accomplished by the Spirit of God. Now this sin is committed today only by unbelievers who deliberately, defiantly, and persistently reject the ministry of the Holy Spirit in calling them to salvation. The people who refuse to repent persist in hardening their hearts against the Lord, and they cannot be forgiven because they reject their only means of salvation. Now in essence, the unforgivable sin is to pridefully proclaim that the good work of the Holy Spirit is evil and true children of God do not do that they won't do that so the unforgivable sin can be summarized as the following proclaiming that the Holy Spirit is unclean proclaiming that the good work of the Holy Spirit is evil proclaiming that any evil comes from the Holy Spirit deliberately, defiantly, and persistently rejecting the Holy Spirit's conviction because you choose evil over good. However, not all sins can be forgiven through genuine repentance. So again, repentance is of utmost importance because you can only do 
that while you're alive here on this earth. And the truth is, you don't know when your time is up. Proverbs 27.1 says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. I mean, why concern yourself with tomorrow if your faith is not in Christ Jesus today? Now, it is true that only those people at that specific time in history uh, witnessed the Holy Spirit working through Jesus, and they had only been able to commit that specific sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit in that exact manner. However, because the Holy Spirit arrived after Jesus departed, right, any person could be guilty of blaspheming the Holy Spirit if they saw the Holy Spirit working through a person and they attributed that godly work to evil. Now, such an example can be seen in Acts 4, verses 5 to 22, when the religious rulers refused to confess Christ when they acknowledge the healing of the lame man, which was accomplished by the Holy Spirit through Peter and John in the name of Jesus. Now, another example that you can find is Stephen, who was full of the Holy Spirit, who performed great wonders and signs among the people. Yet, uh, those people claimed Stephen was doing blasphemous things, which attributed the work done through the Holy Spirit to evil. Further, they ended up stoning Stephen to death, rejecting the ministry of the Holy Spirit spoken through Stephen. Now, of course, Saul, who is Paul, was a part of that crowd at that time. However, Paul repented and later confessed Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit worked through him. So this brings me to my final point. So I would say because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, who convicts people of their sins and leads them to salvation, any person who rejects the Holy Spirit because he or she believes the Holy Spirit is not good is guilty of attributing evil to the only one who can lead us to salvation. And all people who hear the truth of the gospel yet reject it are essentially rejecting the Holy Spirit's conviction and are calling evil good and good evil. As I showcase in my article, God Breathed, the Holy Spirit inspired all of the writings of the Bible. And so anyone who says that the Bible is evil blasphemes the work of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the difference between the blasphemy that can be forgiven and the blasphemy that cannot be forgiven is separated by the line of repentance. And it is the people who repent who will discover that they will never blaspheme against the Holy Spirit because they now have the Holy Spirit within them. Thus, all unbelievers will eventually be judged guilty of blasphemy against the Spirit because they will have attributed all that is good as being evil and all that is evil as being good. But true children of God will never commit the unforgivable sin because they are in Christ and the Spirit is in them and they walk by the Spirit.